Disney, starring Dr. Johnny L. and his Mad Men Mad. Thank you, thank you. Well, thank you, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, we have a British composer writing a song inspired by Native Americans. We have a Danish jazz guitar player who takes the song to the US charts. And a decade later, a studio band records a totally different version. And that version lays the foundation for a zillion hip hop records. Right, everybody, mount your Mustangs and listen for the Stratocaster's echo across the plane. Oh. We'll tell you the tale of... Okashi! I'm Dr. Johnny L. Welcome to the 60s. One, two, three, four! Yes, it's the 60s, today featuring Apache, an instrumental classic. A great sounding lead guitar, drenched in echo, conjuring a shimmer of desert heat, as critic Tom Ewing put it, or making it sound Hawaiian, as the band The Shadows put it. You have the horse galloping rhythm, dum tika dum tika dum tika dum tika and you have Sir Cliff Richard on Chinese drum. What? <laughs> yes, Cliff Richard is credited as playing Chinese drum, whatever that is. So, Apache was written by Jerry Lorden, who was on a Wild West high after watching a 50s movie with Burt Lancaster, and the movie's name was Apache. The song was first released by The Shadows in June 1960, and it was meant to be a B-side, but the record producer Nori Paramore's daughter liked the Indian song better. Smart Girl, Apache hit number one in the UK and seven other countries in Europe. It did not, however, make it in the States. So, how did it take off in the US? Well, as it happens, our Great Plains correspondent, Little Miss Lonely from the Mad Men Band, knows everything about this. Hello, Little Miss Lonely, can you hear me? Yes, Dr. L, I can hear you, loud and clear. Great. Little Miss Lonely, what can you tell us about how the Shadows masterpiece Apache crossed the Atlantic? Well, back in 1961, the Danish guitarist Jürgen Ingemann uh, made a cover version of Apache that went to number two on the Billboard chart. And, even more notable, it went to number 9 on the Hot R&B chart. How weird is that? <laughs> it's as weird as the fact that Pat Boone is featured on a compilation disc named Black, Loud and Proud, singing a song about bingo. What? Yeah, he really is. Thank you, Little Miss Lonely. Now, two years after his release of Apache, Ingman and his wife Grete won the Eurovision Song Contest with a song called Dansevise, meaning dance song in Danish. But Apache had planted a seed in American music history that was to be harvested again and again and again. Because in the early 60s, virtually every American artist covered Apache. Back in Europe, there were covers of the Shadows version by bands like The Beatles, who played it in their early Hamburg shows. And now, a word from our sponsors. I used to smear lipstick on their colors all the time, but not anymore. With Little Miss Lonely's Collar Proof Lipstick, you can kiss all the colors you like whenever you like. Little Miss Lonely's Collar Proof Lipstick, it's our secret. I used to get lipstick on my collar all the time, not anymore. With Tix Madison's Lipstick Proof Collar, you can have your color kissed all you like whenever you like. Tex Madison's Lipstick Proof Collar, it's our secret. And we're back, talking about Apache, and I have with me Little Miss Lonely again, still out there on the Great Plains. Now, I'm thinking about the Shadow. Who were they? I don't know. The guy with the specs? Don't know him. The moves? Can't do him. So, where did it all come from? Well, the Shadows were four British fellows originally known as the Drifters. You see why they changed their name, right? Uh, they were not famous for singing, but for instrumentals. Their most famous member was lead guitarist Hank Marvin, a Buddy Holly look-alike with thick glasses and a heavenly sound in his Fender Stratocaster. And this, my friends, is a Fender Stratocaster. Now, Marvin was completed with Bruce Welch, Jet Harris and Tony Meehan. They were the backing band for Cliff Richard, but also toured and released their own records. The Shadows had seven songs in the top three on the UK chart between 1960 and 1963. And two of them, Wonderful Land and Atlantis, were written by the same Lorden who wrote Apache. According to John Lennon, the Shadows were one of the few British bands worth anything before the Beatles. Now, there was an earlier recorded version of Apache by a guy named Bert Whedon. Who the hell is Bert Whedon? Good question. I have no idea, which is why I looked up his phone number. Wait, it's ringing. Yes, hello. Hello, is this Mr. Bert Whedon? No, Mr. Whedon passed away in 2012 and I've lived here since, happily. Could you please, sir, tell us who the hell was Bert Whedon? 
Well, young man, you could ask any of the famous guitarists of the 60s. Ask Eric Clapton, Paul McCartney, George Harrison, John Lennon, Dave Davies, Keith Richards, Pete Townsend, Tony Iommi, and Jimmy Page. And if you don't want to ask the 60s guitarists, why don't you ask Sting, Mark Knopfler, or Robert Smith? Or actually, tell you what, just ask Hank Marvin of The Shadows. And just why would I want to do that? They all had Whedon's book, Play Every Day, to thank for a lot of their instrumental learning. Like Paul McCartney said, George and I went through the Burt Whedon books and learned DNA together. DNA? As in germs and stuff? No, D and A. Guitar chords. Very simple, if you have Mr. Whedon's book. Incredibly difficult to master otherwise. Anyway, Mr. Whedon's version of Apache was not released until the Shadows version had already taken off. It then reached a modest number 24 on the UK charts. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Not Burt Whedon, for enlightening us. Right, tell you folks, that was all from the 60s for today. No, it wasn't. It wasn't? No, it wasn't. Hi, I'm Tex Madison from the Mad Men Band. That's not important, but what is important is that uh, a band called the Incredible Bongo Band, which was a studio band, not a real band, on their 1973 album Bongo Rock included a funked up version of Apache. Now, this became a huge sample and a major influence on early hip-hop pioneers like Cool Herc, the Sugar Hill Gang, and Africa Bombata. So, the Shadows were actually hip-hop pioneers. Who would have thought? Who'd have thought? Happy trails. Thank you, Tex. In fact, whosampled.com has a list of 462 artists that have sampled the incredible Bongo Band's Apache, including Kanye West, New Kids on the Block, and The Prodigy. Whoever those artists may be. Well, thank you, Little Miss Lonely, Mr. Not Burt Whedon, Tex Madison and the Madman Band, and our sponsors, Little Miss Lonely's Color Proof Lipstick, Tex Madison's Lipstick Proof Colors, and our producers, Porter and Terrell Syndrome, and Megapixel. If there is anything else worth knowing about Apache that we haven't covered, or if there's anything else on your 60s mind, tell us in the comments. Listen to the Madman Band's version of Apache here, and listen to a few other versions of Apache, among other The Shadows, Bert Whedon, Ingman, and The Incredible Bongo Band here. Don't forget to subscribe, and remember, always welcome back to the 60s. See you soon. One, two, three, four! <laughs>